There are just about 10 weeks left in the current session of the Colorado Legislature. This is the point in the session where the clock is ticking and lawmakers really get down to business. Fewer bill introductions, more debate, more voting, all in an effort to get the state's legislative work done before the 120-day session ends in May. Welcome to Politics Unplugged. I'm Ann Trujillo. 120 days. Seems like a lot of time in January, but as we near the halfway point, time at the state capitol becomes a precious commodity. And here's a look at some of what we have seen in recent days. On Friday, the bill that would repeal Colorado's death penalty had its first reading before the full House after passing the Senate. It's expected to pass the House as well and head to the governor's desk. A bill that would replace Columbus Day with a day honoring St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, an Italian-born American who lived in Colorado 100 years ago, has passed the House and now heads to the Senate, as does the Crown Act, which would ban hairstyle discrimination. That bill will be heard by the State Veterans and Military Affairs Committee tomorrow. And what may be the most contentious right now, a bill to tighten vaccine exemptions passed out of a state Senate committee early Thursday morning. And if this bill becomes law, parents would still be able to opt their children out of immunizations for personal reasons. But here's the catch. An immunization provider would have to sign off on their waiver or the parent would have to watch an educational video on vaccines before signing the paperwork themselves. Supporters want to see more kids vaccinated. They're hoping this will increase Colorado's immunization rates to 95%. Opponents say this infringes on their privacy and parental rights. I feel that it's private information and that each family gets to make their own decisions. We need to improve that vaccination rate so that we can create what's called um, community immunity or protection for other kids who can't get vaccinated. Oh, and speaking of contentious, there's also the Family and Medical Leave Insurance or Family Act, and this is the sixth attempt to get this through. It would require businesses and employees to pay into a fund that would cover eight weeks of paid leave and growing to 12 weeks for every Colorado worker who needs it. Well, joining us to talk about the bill is State Senator Faith Winter, and thank you so much for being here. Sixth time. Yes. It's not, it, this has not been an easy point to get to, so why are you still fighting for this bill? This is a big program and you have to get it right. But the reason it's so important is one out of four moms goes back to work two weeks after giving birth. We have cancer patients that skip their second round of chemotherapy because the choice is to either have chemotherapy or lose their job. We have people that have taken their parents off of life support from their break rooms because they don't have time off. I think we can be responsible employees and responsible family members, and the way to do that is through paid medical and family leave. So how would this work? <clears throat> I know I said eight weeks and eventually up to 12 weeks. How would this work and who would it apply to? So it's very different than it's been in previous years. This year it's a guaranteed benefit and we are creating a very affordable and fair insurance market to provide insurance for this. So it's not run through the state this year and it would start at eight weeks in 2022, go up to 10 weeks in 2025 and eventually get to 12 weeks in 2027. We'll start for everyone that works at an employer with 20 or more employees, uh, ramp down to 10 and then ultimately have a path to get to universal coverage. So who would not be uh, you know, able to, to take this leave or? You yeah. have to work at your job for six months okay. in order to access the leave. And so if you work, if you're a seasonal worker or you're not at your job for six months, uh, you won't be able to access the benefit. Okay, so you talked about some concessions and what you've learned over these, these six tries. Okay. So what concessions have you had to make? And so how is, this, how is this different now? The biggest difference is that it's not a state-run social insurance program. Uh, so you actually aren't going to be paying into state government. Uh, what will happen is the employers can choose different ways to meet the requirements. They can either just provide paid family leave or they can buy an insurance product from the private market that ensures this benefit. And I know it is employers and businesses that have been pushing back on this. So how have you made concessions there so that they're not saying, no, we don't, we don't want to deal with this? Sure, they wanted flexibility. This plan offers more flexibility instead of mandating everyone's pain into a state market. Uh, they really wanted that you didn't qualify for six months. They felt they wanted a longer relationship with the employee before they could access the benefit. Uh, we also changed the definition of family. Uh, last year, it was your family members or someone that was a blood-like relationship to your family. Mm. This year, <clears throat> it was important that we kept in that definition 
a family mm -hmm. that was blood-like because some people in Colorado don't have a relative to care for them. But we added in a uh, constraint that said that person has to have a financial relationship to you. So that's limiting it, um, which was a concession as well. So you, you said not state-run. So this would work like workers' comp? How, do, how would this work? Um, it would work that you could either just, prov as an employer, you could provide the benefit or buy it from the private market. So buy it from Sun Life, MetLife, TIAA. Um, different companies are interested in providing this benefit and they would provide the insurance for that. So I guess um, I, I know that there was some criticism that this could lead to some discrimination, say, against mm -hmm. women. We corrected for that. So originally, ultimately, we started in December and we had two choices in front of us. We had a social insurance program um, that we realized couldn't pass the legislature. And we had Pinnacle who came forward with a proposal as well for an entirely private market. The sponsors got together and tried to combine that and take all the social protections from the social program to protect workers, which includes non-discrimination, and the flexibility and efficiency from the private market. So what we did is all the insurance companies providing for this have to use community rating, meaning that we will have a community rating and they can't charge different employers different amounts. So you mm -hmm. can't charge employers with more women mm -hmm. different rates. Um, so everyone's charged the same rate. There's guaranteed issuance. So for the businesses that want to buy this product, companies have to sell it for them. And then to make it work for the insurance companies providing it, we have a risk pool adjustment. And so if one company is providing a lot of insurance for a company that employs more women and they're losing money, and then one insurance company that um, is providing insurance for companies that don't use leave often, there's a risk pool to even that all out and make sure everyone's kept whole. Interesting. Okay, so <laughs> what's the status of this bill and what do you think the chances are? We are introducing the bill this week mm -hmm. and we're closer than we've ever been. We have support from the Senate, we have support from the governor, uh, and we have support from the House. Um, and so right now we have to go through the process and as always in democracy, the process gets a little messy. I'm sure there'll be amendments and debate and testimony, um, but we're in a place where everyone involved really wants to get this done this year. So you feel like this is your, your best effort yet? And yes. A compromise? This is the year. Okay, well thank you so much, Senator Faith Winter. Appreciate you here to explain uh, yep. what's happening at the thank state you. capitol. Appreciate it. All right, we'll be right back.